Hey, it's Todd Graves. Welcome to the channel today. I am with the absolute best short game master in the world, my brother. We're going to talk about the bump and run. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're going to play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. So welcome to the channel. Today, I got a special guest, my brother, Tim Graves. Tim and I run the Graves Golf Academy. And one thing you got to know about Tim, I don't know anybody who has a better short game than my brother. And I don't talk about short game much on the channel because I'll leave it up to Tim because he's so good at it. One of the things, and Tim and I have played some tournaments lately, and I got to tell you something, nobody is better at this shot, the bump and run, than my brother. So I thought I'd bring him out talk about some of the things that he thinks about in these shots because these are so important when you get out there and you score well. Thanks, Tim, for joining yeah, me today. You got it. You got um, it. So one of the things that happens in these shots, I got to admit, I'm not very good at this shot, where you have, basically, I just measured, you have 12 feet of green here, 12 feet, and you can't really land the ball on the green. And when I watch you hit these shots, I see you, I want to know what you're thinking about because... Like I, here's the things I don't understand. The trajectory of the ball. I'm always playing with, okay, what club should I use? How high? Because you got a big slope here. I mean, you got a pretty good uphill slope. Big slope, yeah. So you got to hit the ball a certain height. How many bounces do you want the ball to take right. before it gets to the green? I want to just walk me through what you think about on this. Sure. I mean, it's it's an odds game. I mean, I look at it as basically an odds. I mean, so it's it's an odds game as what can I do in this type of shot to get me the closest to the hole? But if I happen to miss a shot a little bit, I'll still have a five, six, seven footer. I mean, I'm obviously trying to make or get within a foot or two, but I still have a five, six footer. Whereas if, if I hit a shot that's got low odds, I might not get it on the green or I might blade it over the green. So it's always an odds game. And in this type of thing right here on this type of shot, yeah, you got a very uphill slope to very no green at all. So I'm going to look to try to bang it into the hill and use that hill as my friend. I'm going to actually, I want this hill, I'm using it to my advantage because here's what most people do when they get over a short game. I look at the advantages out here. I don't look at the disadvantages. So I want this hill. I know there's a little bit of fringe in this hill that'll stop the ball a little bit faster. I know if I land this on the green, it's going to skip over if I land it on the green. So I'm going to use that as my advantage. The other thing here is that I look at all the way to the hole. Because the first thing I'm going to do, if this was nice and smooth and it was a perfectly cut course, I might chip with a hybrid here. Or you might putt it. I might putt it. Yeah. Yeah, I might putt it. I mean, you see a lot of guys on tour putt this or chip with a hybrid. But between me and halfway up there, I've got divots. I've got some dead grass. I've got some rough areas. I, I don't trust that. So the odds to me are is if I could try to land it into that hill and bang it up there and let it bounce over top of that, I think it'd be a better shot for me. So it's always an odds game. So anytime, that's why you watch me. When I walk out of the cart, I got six or seven clubs in my hand. In fact, the joke is a lot of time, why don't you just bring your whole bag half the yeah. time? Because yeah. I don't know what I need yet. Yeah. So I'll walk over here like I brought a hybrid, I brought a seven iron, I brought a gap wedge, I brought a lob wedge. It could have been any one so of those you think, shots. You think one of the problems that people they bring the, they bring the lob wedge over and they 100%. just percent. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, such a low percentage. We could, we call that in our schools a multiple club approach. You know, it's a hundred percent. That's the problem. They walk over and they're stuck with that one club. Because if I'd have brought just a hybrid over here, I'd have to hit through a bunch of rough area. I probably not even get it on the green. Right. If I'd have brought just a lob wedge over here, it gives me one shot only. Right. Okay. So they need to walk over with a bunch of clubs again. Those options. Right. And then when I get up over it, now I'm going to visualize that shot. So the biggest next thing now is the average golfers do is they don't visualize a shot. I'm going to sit there and say, okay, now, and I call it the four C's. You know, we've talked about that in our schools a lot. I'm going to create the shot in my head first, okay? So I'm going to get over and I'm going to create it. Then I'm going to commit to it with confidence. And then I'm going to critique it. And when I critique it, it's actually about how well did I pull it off? Should I try that again? Should I go practice so that? So when you're creating the shot, mm -hmm. so, and I, you probably can't see it great on the camera, but this is probably up, what do you think is a 20 degree slope At here? At least. I mean, okay. well, you can throw a golf ball, you can see, because if you throw a golf ball on that, it's, 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 right. it's, it's right. sitting there by now, watch how fast it comes down. Yeah. I mean, so there's a lot of slope. Yeah, there's that. a lot of slope there. A lot of slope. Right. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot of, slope. of slope. So, so what, when you create this uh -huh. shot, T tell me what. Tell me the shot you see right now. The shot I see right now is obviously I'm going to go the, the best probability I've got. And I would I'd walk up here at first saying, could I putt this or cut here with a hyper? And I can't. So the next thing I'm going to say is I'm going to try to land this into the hill and I'm going to try to jump it up. I'm going to walk up here. Okay. You tell me where you would land it. I'm going to land it. I see a little divot up there. Just left of that. I'm going to right. Yeah, just left of that. I'll land it right in there. So I'm, that's my landing zone. So I want to bang it into that and then I'm going to one hop it onto the green. Yep, and at worst, two hop it on the green and roll it out. So you don't mind if it goes one, two, then green? No, no not at you, all. Or one, then green. On green. One or two hops, I'll get away with. But three hops is probably too much. Too much. In fact, 
It's that funny story they had that one I talk about this a lot at the schools where VJ Singh lost the PGA Championship. And on the 72nd hole, he had this kind of shot here, and he hit a three hop, he hit a two hopper and it ran past the flag and he missed the putt. And they interviewed him after the round and they said, describe the shot. And he goes, it was a three hopper, not a two hopper. Uh, I'll never forget that. He goes, it's a three hopper. Meaning he visualized three hops in the rough. Right, and it missed and that last out, one. And it last one and it went too far behind. He missed it. He missed the playoff by a shot because he said three hopper, not two hopper. Well, I'm doing the same thing here. I'm trying to create how many times I want to hop it through. And most of the time I hit this shot, it's at most of two hops, maybe a three. That'd be really fast screens. But I'm going to hit it into that, bounce it up, and then roll it out. Yeah. Now, the next thing you're going to look at that is you got a club selection. Right. Because if I tried that with a 7-iron or an 8-iron or a 9-iron, it's going to hit that and it's going to skid right across. I've got to hit that fringe and create spin. So this is, this is the big part. This is the mistake most golfers make. Is I'm going to create, I'm going to select a very lofty club. Because the more loft you have in that club and then you de-loft it, it gives you more time for that club, that ball, to rise up the face, which creates more spin. Yeah. So I'm going to take a lob ledge or a sand wedge. I'm going to push my hands forward with the ball back. And you still got the loft. And I'm going to got the loft, but I've de-lofted, but it creates a spin. Got it. So this ball's got a ton of spin. So when it hits that bank, it's going to jump. And that jumper's from the spin. It's going to hit that bank. It's going to jump up, hit the green, and roll out. Because if you could hit that shot, but if you don't have spin on it, and we need a lot of it, it's just going to skip. It's funny because we were we were playing in a in a tournament uh, last year out here. Out here, seventeen. Remember right. that shot you hit? Right. So Tim won't brag on himself, but <laughs> he hit it a little bit left of the green, kind of through the green. He was on a downslope. The pin was on a downslope on the left side of the green, so he had zero. There was no shot. Matter of fact, the average me, I would have just hacked it on the green, had a fifteen footer. Right. Because there was no shot. I see Tim. I watched him, and we're we're we were in the hunt, right? Yeah, we were. I'm watching Tim, and he's he's scoping it out. So I kind of just watched him. And he gets over there and he's kind of playing with the slope. He's kind of playing with the slope. He's trying to figure out. He's looking at where he's trying to land it. Trying to, trying to land it. He kind of scoots it. He's going to, he's kind of, I see you kind of seeing what you're, right. uh, you're kind of looking at where is it supposed to go? Creating the shot. How are you creating it? Creating it. Creating but, yep. he, but he grabbed a bunch of clubs. He's like trying to create right. it. He's creating it. And all of a sudden he grabs this. I think, what'd you grab? I don't even know what you I grabbed a lob wedge. Lob wedge. Lob wedge. But he's lob. on the down slope, right. so it's super delofted. Right. And he bumps it and goes boom, 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 boom into the slope, trickles onto the green and just rolls up like two feet. It was the most incredible shot. And even the guys we were playing with were like, no way. No way. There was no shot. And, and he got up well, and down. The reason is because if you knew it beyond the pin was water. Yeah, you're, you're hitting the water, the so water. it's dead. And so that's so, what those, those so guys So what were plants, you thinking? You're thinking, okay, just if I'm sure I'm good. Well, no, <laughs> yeah. I, I was thinking, how can I get it just on the edge of the green and roll out? I mean, I was trying to get that the last roll on the green. Yeah. I was just trying to get so the last roll. So that's interesting because the last roll on the green, because it was so fast. He, he, Tim knew if he got the ball on the green, it's going to trickle down. Right. Yeah. And that's what, but those guys who play with saw water. So they saw because yeah. if they had taken if they had taken less oh, loss than down to the slope, they'd have played. It was dead. The, water. the shot was dead. Right. I mean, it was dead. So, but that, but it, but here's the other thing: if you practice these shots, if you visualize it and you practice these shots, they're really not that hard. That's the other thing: is no one practices this no. stuff. No, yeah. and I practice every day. Yeah. I mean, I enjoy this type of stuff because yeah. this is a challenge. In fact, you saw two minutes ago. You saw Mickey Tells and Willie Wood up here. They're practicing, and we and our camera crews like they're practicing the shot. Yeah, bumping and runs. No, because yeah. on this golf course, which a lot of great golf courses, you might have this a half dozen times. And I think the lesson too is is everybody's trying to flop it in there. Like I play with kids, and right. they flop everything. Mm -hmm. Look, this grass, the lowest percentage shot right here is a flop shot. Well, here's the other thing, is we didn't grow up on perfectly manicured Augusta National grass. We grew up on public or dormant golf courses. I mean, right now we're at Oak Tree National, which is a phenomenal course, but the grass is half dormant. Yeah. So there's no way you can hit a flop off this. Yeah. I mean, you try to hit a flop off this, you're going to blade it, you're going to fat it. It's wet, dormant grass right now. Okay. So really, honestly, 90% of the time I go out, I'm going to go to this shot because the flop shot's hard to hit, number one. Number two is it's a, such a high room for error, yeah. such a high risk. So I want to bang this in the hill and let it jump up and then roll out. So it don't have you come hit a couple, but I'm going to show you. So. Okay. I'm gonna get up over this. I'm what, gonna play what, like what a chip. What club is that? This is. A, I actually got a lob wedge because okay. it's so severe on the slope. All right. So I'm gonna get up over this. I'm gonna get up over, and as I hit this shot, I'm gonna be very aggressive and look for my landing zone. Okay. So my landing zone, like you showed right that divot, that divot. just left that divot. Yeah. Now I'm gonna try to hop it up there. So I'm gonna set up. Yeah. That that was that landed like three inches right by yeah. the divot. Yeah. Right perfect. there. So so now in my mind, just like I said, the four C's. I created this shot. That actually, I got a basically a two hops. The second hop barely caught in the fringe, and it rolled out. But you notice when it hit the ground, it jumped up. So it actually jumped higher than the flight even into the ball because that spin when it hit jumped up in the air. So I'm gonna. I created the shot. Then I commit to it with confidence. I didn't give up in that shot. I was very aggressive. Right, aggressive. Then the last thing is I critique it. 
And my critique on that is, okay, that thing jumped a little bit to the right, so maybe there's a little bit of right slope up there. So if I'm going to hit my next shot, I'm going to hit a little bit left, but I like where I landed that. Yeah. Now, if I were to land that short, I'd say, okay, i got to be a little more aggressive, a little higher. If I land a little long, but I'm going to critique the shot, or high or low. But remember, when you critique it, it's the height of the shot, the spin of the shot, so and the rollout. I'm going to watch the tra trajectory again. Hit okay. one more. I want to watch the trajectory of this. So it's not getting, it's like, it's like this high. Yeah, it's high. It's, it's, it's like slope. that high. In fact, it's probably waist high in the middle of that slope. Right. It's not high because, because what golfers do and the mistake they make is they try to lift it. And when they lift it, it's going to get through with no spin. So you're either going to blade it and, or when it hits short, it's going to stop. It's not going to get there. Yeah. Well, what you see guys, when they start starting this at first, they lift and then when it lands, they killed it. Yeah. And that actually landed about a foot short of I was landing, but that right. basically so I too killed high. it. I tried to lift it. Yeah. And that's such a high risk shot if I'm trying to land that on the green. So right now I'm gonna sit there and take this ball and try to land it on that golf ball. I'm right? that's basically hit my one spot. more, I'm gonna okay. okay. Hit one more, I'm gonna watch the ball land okay. real quick. One more. That was interesting because that's the critique. Now that one has a three hopper, so I need a two, but it's a little bit short. Another one. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, because it just it hits that one, it kills it, and kills then it, it rolls up there. Yeah. But you're seeing that that spin Waste kills high. it. It's good. But you can hit that same shot. So I'm using the slope. Yeah. I'm no, using I, the I slope. Like it, yeah. I'm using a little bit of the grass. I'm using that. So. The mistake most golfers make in that is they don't take enough loft in the club because I'm de-lofting this like crazy. Number one, number two, they hit it too high, so when it hits the slope, it just stops. But I'm letting that slope be my advantage. I'm letting I'm using that slope. You know, and it hits, it skids up. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, so, yeah, it, it, well, it does. It's coming in waist high, like you right. said. Like I'm, I like that idea right. of waist high, and then it once it hits, it goes kill, and then it yeah, oh, it just it, it kills it, and then it rolls, rolls it out. out. Yeah, and so, so um, if you got to kill it, if you was the pin was even closer. Let's say I mean that pin's six, seven feet. I mean maybe ten feet on. Let's say it was five feet on. I could two hop it in there. Yeah. I mean, so like, let's play the game. Let's say I've got to get this just barely on the green. So let's say this pin is like. That. By the way, this is what he does because this is he's playing around with. He's playing the game. It's it's playing like experimenting on the feel of the shot and what the kit was slopes doing. You're learning. Yeah, right. So let's say I want to get halfway to that pin. I want it on the green, but halfway. I need to at least hop it twice, maybe three times. Right. So I'm gonna sit there, maybe look at a spot that's a little bit short of that divot now, just a little bit. I love that one right there. There's a two hopper that goes just short. It's coming in hot. It's coming in hot. It's coming in hot. hot. But no, it's halfway to the pin. Yeah. So do that again. Now, again, you've got to be careful on this because this is into the grain. I mean, this is wet. I mean, it's like, a, a, you know, it's kind of a, a dead kind of spot Well, let's here. talk about it. Let's talk about technique then because because yeah. you've got to get the hands ahead. Got to get ahead. Got ahead. That, the that's whole, the key. The thing, and that's why when I back it up in the stance, I got good angle down. Right. If you get in the middle or forward that's on this. That's the other mistake people they, make. They, put it, they don't put it far enough that's back. In technique. fact, if you're going to err on this. Err on the back. Err back. There's many times I've actually walk up over this shot and I'll set up and I'll actually back it up a little bit in yeah, my stance. I've seen you do that, yeah. Just back it up to de loft it because I've got to get you'd ball first. you rather have it too hot. You've got to catch ball first. You've got to go ball into the ground because well, if you catch ground first at all. I'll use your club. Okay. Because this has a lot more loft than my club. Like, I don't have a. Is this 60? That's 60. Yeah, I don't carry 60. So, so you got you got to super de loft this. Yep. Back far enough? I go a little further right there and then keep him for. Yep, that's it. Now, be aggressive. The one thing, it's interesting, the one thing you'll see most golfers will do on this is not aggressive enough because that hill's going to stop it fast. That's super aggressive there. That's it. Me. Look how fast it stopped. Yeah, stop. it's hit it to the right. That's how fast it stopped. That's the beauty of this. The, you you got to be super well, aggressive. Well, but here's the other thing. You're, I call the lies you're on right now sticky. Yeah, super and describe And you can describe then what do you mean by sticky? It's just like grabbing the club. Like it's, it just grabs it's the club. It's wet, it's into the grain, it's a tight lie. It grabs the club like crazy. And a lot of people would want to hybrid this up or putt it, but you can't because of the bad ground so in between. The so I'm going to get very aggressive to get through a sticky ground. Tons of shaft lean. Uh -huh. Yep. That's it. That's the shot. Yeah. Wow. That was it. That's aggressive. It's, it's impressive. You got you to have some, you got to have some trust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, you gotta I wanted trust. to say something a little more. <laughs> <laughs> You can't be you can't be chicken it out on no, these. No, no. But I like the loft of that, but that's better. Yeah, that one's good there. Yeah. So now on this one, pick a spot. So now now walk through the four C's. 
Okay. Okay. So let's say you're on the golf course. We're playing a tournament. We played a tournament the last couple days. Okay. Okay. Great and, shot. And we we had that one hole that we both got in trouble when we had we had the shot. Was it like 15 or 16? Right. We both had the shot. Right. And I remember we both walked up over, and the one kid that we played with was a young kid, good player, bladed it over, and the other kid fatted it short. You remember yeah, that? Trying to flop it. No, trying to flop it. And we had the same shot. And I, we walked up over. So now in your mind, create so yeah. create the shot. So I'm I'm seeing a, a really lofted shot coming right. in like this, coming in hot right in here. Right. Right in here, coming in hot, and then it'll kick it to the right. Right. That's what I'm so saying. Now, so you've created the shot. So now what I would do is I sit up next to take a couple practice swings because you got to stay aggressive. Okay. And then and as I'm doing that, I'm looking at my landing zone. So I'm never, I'm looking at my, right, my landing right. zone. Lining up. And then I will exaggerate back a little bit yeah, in the stance. Yeah, I, I felt like that, yeah. And then I'll hit that spot. That's it. And that's three feet. Yeah. Three, that's three, that's three feet max. Yeah. So now, now. Do the same thing. So do the same thing. I just so play the game. So hit the shot. And try to keep it close, short of the pin. Can okay. you land it three or four? Can you bump it three times into the fringe? Okay. Yeah. There you go. Wow. That's it. That's the shot. You made that. That's the shot. That's the shot. So because because so here's so let's just talk about this in general, and let's see what you can do here because this is because if I if I was teaching my high school kids or my college players or whatever it is right now, we're teaching the short game. This is exactly what I'd do. I'd say okay. I want you to take this ball. We're going to play it like it's on the golf course. You let it lie. And I sit there and say, hit a flop shot into this. Say, so try to hit a flop shot. And just see what you can do. Just try yeah. to hit a flop shot. And yeah. see how well you can do it. Okay? And that wasn't bad. That's six, seven feet right. That wasn't bad. What's the risk reward in that? What? Well, I mean, you're going to blade it. I just feel like I'm going to blade put, it. Now, put some nerves on it. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. No, that's the see, point. So now. No, no, no. So, no, this is it. So this is, so this this is, is the, the point thing. right here. Because, yeah, you're out here. So you got guys out here hitting 30 shots, 40 shots in a row. Now. Todd, if you hit this three feet, I'll give you a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, and guess what? I'm not flopping it. And guess what? <laughs> Ready? No. Yeah, it, here yeah. You go. Uh, here, uh, get a turn right there. So now, now, so you're on. So let's make this nervous for you. You gotta hit a flop shot. I want you to hit a flop shot. Okay. And if you, hit this, if you hit this inside, that guy's in danger. if you hit side inside three feet, I give you hundred bucks. Okay. Okay. Can I hit a flop. What's that? You gotta hit a flop. Okay. I'd pay you hundred bucks. If you miss it, you gotta pay me hundred bucks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Typical. Typical. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> There you go. No chance. That, no, that's it. Zero because, chance. Because no, because see, we put some nerves on it. Look at that. Okay, we put some nerves on it. Yeah. Okay. Now, so now I sit up over this and I sit there. Okay. Now it's an odds game. Now you got to get inside this three feet and you're going to bang into the hill. Yeah. High percentage. High percentage. Super high percentage. It's a percentage. Yeah. All right. Hundred. Get my hundred bucks back. <laughs> Look at that. There you go. You just got hundred bucks back. back. Yeah. So we're even now. Whew. Now, but no. Here's the interesting part. Because you said this Jesse in the cart we were playing together. You watch these two young guys. They were good players. Yeah. But you looked at me, and I played tournaments. How many, how many tournaments are I playing? I mean, yeah. My comment to them was, was, here's the thing about your game, and I've played enough golf with you in a lifetime, but in competition now, because I used to not play much of competition mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. We've played some competition. You'll never ever. Tim, Tim's the best partner to have because he's never going to make a big number on the golf course, and as a partner, that's huge because because like I'll hit it out of play and go, it's all yours, partner, but I guarantee it. <laughs> He's never going to make a big number because he plays high percentage golf, right. especially around the greens. Like he, Tim can miss a green, and you're like, okay, that's par. You know, usually it's like, okay, up and down. Now it's par. Right. And, and if I have a birdie putt, it's great. Right. You know, we only had we we won the tournament, but we only had a couple times where we both had birdie well, putts at it. Th yeah, it, it's funny. At number three yesterday, what happened at number three yesterday? We got it was a, it was a par three. And it was a slope green to the front. You know, I'll, I'll break on this one because remember what happened? You hit, hit you, you got the tee. No, you got the tee. And you hit it long. And you hit it longer the green about, I mean, I mean back behind the pin. Uh -huh. You hit like 10, 15 feet behind, but it was very sloped downhill. And I said, and you hit it, I think you hit a seven iron. And I said, I'm going to keep it short of the pin, the pin's on the front, or short of the green. And I hit an eight, just short of the green. Right. Remember, we drove up there, what did and I say? Oh, yeah, and, oh, yeah no, okay. So Tim goes, Tim hits it short in the, in the best spot to hit it. Tim right. goes, I'm going to chip it in. Tim goes, he gave himself birdie basically on the yeah. way up there. He's like, I'm going to chip it in. I'm like, okay, whatever. And I had this long, nasty downhill putt. I lagged it up there, and you just went, and he goes, told you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the point was, the odds were I, I, would, I had a better chance to chip that in the putt from behind. Yeah, me. you did. Because it's you uphill. saw. It was uphill. Yeah, it was uphill. Yeah. I mean, and, and there's no way I was going to make four from behind. But that's the way Tim plays. Tim right. plays like he looks at the golf course as like strategy, total strategy. I love strategy golf. So, and but, I told, and these guys yesterday were hitting it 30 yards past us right. on average. And I was like, these guys have no chance against right. us. You think length matters? Right. Not when well, you guys, not, it was not interesting because the guys we played yesterday, he hit that one flop shot and he made it. It was a great shot, but it was only up and down all day. <laughs> yeah. No, it yeah. was, you know, he, didn't you know, got, he, he never got up and down and he made it. But yeah, yeah. And, and he hit that flag hard. Exactly. It was hilarious, dude. 
That's Ooh. the perfect shot. Yeah. See, it killed it. Like, don't. That's the perfect it. shot. But it's my it's, biggest challenge on these is trajectory. Remember, it's numbers game. So, if, so, so that's where I'll tell you this: air too far back. Okay. Air your hands too far forward. Okay. So, in air forward press and the hands too much. There you go. Now, that's interesting. I flew it too far. But no, but here's the interesting part. That's only 12, 13 feet past. Yeah, that's true. So, okay, so maybe you're going to miss that putt. So, that's probably a 30% chance to make, but it's not a flop shot that went a right. foot or bladed over. <laughs> not that. No, that, I, didn't honestly, lose a, I didn't lose 100 bucks. And that's probably the worst you could hit it. Right, that's it. That's yeah. true. That's true. That's yeah, it. That's, that's the perfect it. shot. That's it right there. But here's the impressive part. And you know how I play this game. I know sometimes it's the way you hit a drive, irons are impressive. Like, look how you can drive. This turns me on. This right here, hitting a shot like this yep. is more impressive to me in a round. And I get more confidence on this than anything we do out yeah. there. And this is why I like playing difficult golf courses. Here's the other deal. You know the bet when I want to play. I want to blow in 30. <laughs> I want slope greens. I want greens running fast. Well, when this shot right here plays, you can play 100 mile an hour when you can play the shot. Right. You start playing flop shots and that stuff, you got no chance. Yeah. You get windy out and you hit flop shots, those balls go everywhere. This one plays in anything. Yeah. This is the aggressive, I can play any conditions type shot. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's why you never you never make big numbers. I mean, never. I haven't seen you make a big number when we in any tournament we play. You and me, never. So. I'm, I've always I made a couple doubles in the last couple of tournaments. You never make a double bogey yeah. ever. Mm. Too high. Well, you know, it's interesting. That wasn't, but that's now, but not bad. Six feet five. Now, yeah. here's what's interesting. So you critique that. That's the last thing we'll talk uh, about. I didn't have part of back. Right. So now, so the height, and you also, and also, be honest with you, when it hit the ground, it kind of rolled out. I want a little more spin. Okay. So I want you to be very aggressive, take care of the wire, so back it up, back, be aggressive. More aggressive. Yep. Like Ooh, that. that. I love that. Yeah, that Even though I kind of hit it too yeah. low. Yep. Yep. That, that was that was fine. That's, That's perfect. Su super aggressive. That was the that best shot. That takes some guts. It takes some guts. It takes some guts to but drill it into the slope. If you practice it. Yeah. Think, think about it now. So so here's the question for you. Let's say we went and played a oh, so you're practicing at Oak Tree National today. Let's say we went and played a round of golf today. We put a little pressure on. Let's say we're gonna go play for 50 bucks. And we're going to play with our group and go play. How many of these shots do you think you'd have around? Out here? Yeah. Six. At least, wouldn't you? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Because every, that, every time you miss the green, you got this shot. Here's what's interesting. Six if you're hitting it good. Yeah. If you weren't hitting it well, yeah. how many did you have? You might have, you might eight. have eight to ten. Yeah. I'll, 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 yeah. If I'm hitting it great out here, I'll have at least four of these. Yeah. That's what I'm hitting it great. Because here's what's interesting. You could hit it five feet short of this hole and have it come back down this hill yeah. and you got the shot all day. Yeah. So, and the guys know, at home know exactly what And by what the way, about. the tour players that practice out here, all they do is practice this shot. That's all they That's practice. All they do. Well, you saw it earlier. Yeah. You saw two of them all practice earlier. This is the shot you get. Yep. If you can hit this shot, you got it yep. out here. That's the perfect shot. Yeah, and I even chunked that a little bit. Well, know? that's the point. It's it's, yeah. a, it's a percentage High game. High percentage. Yeah. Yeah, and you're you're six feet. Yeah. It's a it's a percentage game. Yeah. Back. Back. Hands, hands leading. Super aggressive. Aggressive. There it is, right there. That's perfect, right there. You made hit it. that one better. Made yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. So what you play? So that. So think about the. So play an odds game out there with you. Yeah. When you go out there, play a numbers game. Play. What's the percentage? I, I guess game? what I'm surprised on this shot, just just from talking to you about it. You know, we've known each other forever, but mm -hmm. this is the first time we've talked about the lob wedge because mm -hmm. I'm usually using a 52 or even a. Yeah, I'm surprised. I well, I want you to get your hands further leading and just keep that and keep yeah, it back because it, it gives that spin because if you it get, lets it check, it lets it, lets it, it check, check, and also. When you get more law off the club, you can back it up a little bit more and you get the hands a little bit more, which keeps you more aggressive. I got you. If I start going to 52 or 48, if I, I, if I put it back like that, I don't have enough D-loft That makes on sense. It. So I want to back it up as much as I can to D-loft it, and that's why I want to do that. Because awesome. you can get that thing way back. Yeah. I mean, I've watched some of the pros walk into shots. They go way yeah. forward. Yeah. They literally will, because it's so far back. Yeah. That's where you can do it, because you get the right loft in. Yeah. So. Thanks. Appreciate yep. it. Yep. Thanks, guys, for joining us today. We'll get Tim out here for more shots. Appreciate you joining the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And don't forget. Just share this video with all your friends because they need help in their short game too.